Hey everybody, this is Rich. You're with South Florida Beekeeping with Rich. I don't think you're going to find this video boring, but trust me, you're going to want to hang out till the end anyway because I'm going to give you a cool tip at the end that'll make it all worthwhile. So let's uh, get started here. So you know me, I've always got to give you a little bit of history. Well, the first dedicated intention built hive tool in America came out in January 1907. And this is what it looked like. It was made of malleable iron. It was about eight and a half inches long. It had a screwdriver basically at one end and an axe head at the other. The screwdriver, of course, was for handling frames. The axe head was for breaking boxes apart. Um, it had actually been around for a few years at that point, being made on a very small scale by a gentleman named Munch, William Munch. But when he passed away, some entrepreneurs bought the rights to the tool from his wife. And in January, on January 15th, 1907, this came out and was started being advertised in the bee journals. So this end for wedging boxes apart, this end for prying frames apart. And these are the two things that we still need to do today. We need to be able to break the boxes apart and we need to be able to uh, break the frames apart. All the variation you see here and an endless amount of variation besides is all towards that goal. Uh, have some fun. Go on uh, eBay or Amazon or do a Google search for Hive Tools. The wide range and specializations of tools across the world is amazing. But Basically, we have your traditional hive tool, your traditional J tool, and your hybrid tool. And everything else is variations from there. Now, you'll notice, as I began preparing for this video, what I realized that why I do or don't like a particular hive tool is a lot of times a matter of the bevel. So I'm going to introduce you to a term you may not know, and that's called the plunge line. The bevel line on a tool is basically where it starts to angle for the bevel. And we call that the plunge line. I'm gonna use that term, so I want to introduce you to it beforehand because it has a whole lot to do with why I do or don't like any particular tool because that is all a matter of how easy or hard it is to get two boxes apart. Now, we're going to start over here with your traditional hive tool. This is not a traditional hive tool. It looks like one, but it's not. This is a pry bar. It has an extremely acute plunge line. Uh, a angle and a, a, so a very short plunge line for the thickness of the metal. All right, it does not stick in here well at all. Now this is a true hive tool and this one is the only one out of all these that has a true distal taper to it. Instead of having a plunge line and a bevel, it just grinds smoothly up to a thinner point. Now look at the way that slides right in there with no effort at all. So good strength back here and it does what every other one does for breaking these free and using the way it gets used which I hate personally but just me. But this is a true distal taper. It tapers up and gets very thin. Now that thinness is a great benefit. I'm going to, and I'll come back. I'm not really talking about these tools yet. I just want to talk about thinness right now. These two tools are exactly the same in their configuration, but this one is half again thicker in the metal than this tool is. But it has exactly the same plunge line, and therefore the angle of this grind is much more acute. And again, it doesn't really want to get in there, whereas you can get in there really well with it. Not as well, but 
a whole lot better than this one. That one. The reason I want to point that out is that I know a lot of beekeepers who use this as their primary tool. Um, like I said, these came out in 1907. Prior to 1907, beekeepers used what was available, which was mostly either a chisel, a screwdriver, or paint scraper. Look, left and right-handed. Just kidding. But hey, they're two for five bucks. But here's the thing. They're extremely thin, and they have a very good bevel for that extreme thinness, and they slide in. Let me get it there. They slide in really well. Pushing in here to break free, they do it over a wide area, much less damage to the box. And as I said, I know beekeepers who've been doing this for many, many, many times longer than me, and they've lost all of these tools and they want nothing to do with them. They just buy these. Well, you know, they're two for five dollars, shipping included. So that's part of the reason. But for people with arthritis like me, they have a nice fat handle. Good strength. For as far as I'm concerned, this is so much easier to get a frame out than that is because you can just get that point in there and you can get it up and you can get even this over there and you can pull it up with no real problem but yeah you can get that that point in there and get a frame up and you can do all kinds of fine detail work with that point so i understand perfectly well why a lot of people like a paint scraper in the access to anything else why is there a chisel here well because i don't have a turbo tool but a turbo tool to me looks like a file that somebody has curved this part around like this and put a bevel on down here uh, so we'll just use this as a stand-in for a turbo tool and yeah another way of looking at that is if you take this tool which we'll get to in a minute grind that off heat this up and bend that up you'd have the same thing as a turbo tool this is an Italian hive tool. This is actually what started this whole video. Your thumb's covering the uh, point. You're right. There you go. This is what started this whole video. It's long. I was at, and that was part of the reason the guy likes it. I was at the bee club meeting last month up in Palm Beach County. And the guy who runs the uh, uh, raffle. raffle up there, it's like, hey, we're raffling off the best hive tool in the world here. And I went, really? Let's see what he calls the best hive tool in the world. I went, oh, the Italian hive tool. Yeah, I've got one of those. He goes, how do you like it? I said, well, it's great for packing down my smoker. It's about all I use it for. And he looked at me in great disappointment. He says, I use it for everything all the time. And, well, you know, he's right. And, well, then he gave his reasons. His reasons are it reaches a whole lot further down in there to cut wax free. It's extremely narrow. He really enjoys it because it goes down below the shoulders you can get down in this area and pry and you can straighten up the bottom half of your frames nicely with that he likes the fact that it's narrow across here because he can be scraping off propolis from his shoulders and not be doing as much disruption of bees in the in the vicinity i just don't much care for the this end of it, but it is better than your standard J hook. You can get this in there and then turn it and get out of here. And it's you know because it's if they're like this. Well, that's not too great at all. But you can get you can get it turned, pull it up this way, and it comes apart. That's great. We're going to get back to the J hook here now. So here's your standard J hook. I just don't like them at all myself there are those who that's basically it's what i started with so that's what i'm going to use because i've learned i've learned how to use it and i know how to use it okay as far as i'm concerned you know yeah you've got to force them apart before you can get in there to do anything and unlike that other high tool you really can't go in like this and bring them in it's i just don't see how anybody uses them 
However, given that my favorite hive tool, and I'll make no bones about it, is this one. You look at the uh, angle of mine, and you look at what I did there. This took less than two minutes to do. I changed the angle on this, grind in some of that. Away. Mostly I ground from the inside, ground a little bit from the outside to make it a little narrower there. And I turned that monstrosity, my term for it anyway, into a whole series of pluses. Look at that. Look how much easier that is to use. You're still riding it up on the shoulder, but by narrowing that up and changing the angle just a little bit, you make that tool so much more usable. Uh, once I'm done with this video, I'll grind the other tools the same way so that they can actually go into rotation and be used. Because it's like I buy two at a time a lot of times because it's like $2 more expensive than buying one. So, yeah, I'll get a couple of them because you're going to lose them. What's the old saying? Two is one and one is none. So having more than one is good. Now, these combination tools here, hybrid tools they call them, Look at these two. One is a good deal thicker than the other. All right. This one with the uh, indentation down the middle for strengthening, it has the widest plunge line of any tool here. So even though it's thicker, it's very narrow across there. The only thing that you can really compare it to is this tool that has a distal taper rather than a plunge line. And a bevel. It fits way in there. Okay. And of course, it's got the kind of hook that I like. You can get in there and you can get things up with no problem. I'm a lefty, so if I go, I, you know, I really can't use it going this direction. I'm most of the time using it going this way because I don't want to go mashing any bees unless I've smoked them out of the way first. But this one, being of thinner metal, the fact that the plunge line is not as far back doesn't matter. It's still thin. It's still good. It's all a matter of ratios and relationships. Your bevel is, can be shallower this way as long as your metal is thinner. If you want thicker metal, you need to have a wider bevel right there. Uh, hopefully I'm pointing some things out that you may not have even paid attention to. Okay. If you're wondering what these numbers are on here, 151 grams, 125 grams, uh, 196 grams, 218 grams without the hammer, 290 grams with the hammer. Mm. Okay, we're going to get through those. So your basics, your traditional hive tool, your J tool, and your combination tool. Of these three, I like the combination tools the best, but here are the tools. The tool I choose to use is a variation. You know, it's, we didn't reinvent the world here. It is just a variation of the J tool. It's just that with this angle, you can keep your fingers well away from things. You can stay at a very high angle. Even see, this is spaced pretty far apart there, but you can still get it up in there. Even if you have to hit, put it down on the shoulder, you can get it up in there. And you can slide it in there if they're jammed right together. So you can say, well, I'm just lazy. I just use technology instead of developing skill. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's what I did. You'll notice there are three of them there. Yes, I. they didn't come this way. They looked like this when they came. But, hey, I'm old and I have arthritis. And I have tools. So I put handles on mine. I put them on one side because uh, I wanted to have one of those magnetic belt pieces, you know, like this, so I could slap them on it. We'll talk about that more later. But, you know, and this way they lay nice and flat on anything. Now, this tool, obviously, is the shorter version of that tool. It's a little weird. The, these face the same direction on this one. They face opposite directions on that one. 
the small miniature tool of this nature is much thicker. All right. And now look at that bevel. Look how acute. Look how that plunge line is there like that. That is the like the other than that unmodified chisel right there. This is the most acute grind that we have here. These are terrible for trying to get in there to do something like that. Yeah, they're okay like this. But your fingers really are kind of close to the bees. <laughs> so the only great advantage of these is they fit in your pocket. You can leave them in your bee suit, and as long as you don't put it through the wash, you're fine. They go through the wash. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they go through the wash, according to her. All right. Now let's have some fun. We've got the Italian hive tool that we started this story with because it's Michael Bush's favorite tool. And hey, it's my buddy Steve's favorite tool. I like it too for some things. Would I like it enough to have it in the bucket if I was going somewhere to work on bees? No, probably not because I can use anything else to pack down my uh, fuel in my smoker. And that's my main reason for having it. But it's got a wonderful taper to it. Look how far back that plunge line is. It has got a nice shallow bevel and a nice thin blade. It's lightweight, 111 grams. Uh, it has a lot going for it. And where it fits, again, it's simply another variation of a J tool. Just kind of a main variation, as is this. Look at this monster right here. That is your large Turkish hive tool. Every bit as long as this one. You can get it deep down in there for scraping things out. It is extremely wide. Steve would hate this tool. It's extremely wide this way. But on the other hand, it's got a bottle opener. Now, I'm being facetious there, the tool has a nice, deep prying ability there. The one thing that I don't really care that much about on mine is just how shallow that is. It's enough to do the job. But this one is like hefty, hefty, hefty instead of wimpy, wimpy, wimpy to quote an old commercial. And I love this little back piece right here because if you need to clean, because of the depth here and this back angle, you can get in here and you can really clean up into the edges. Okay? Can't do that with mine. With mine, I am pretty well stuck just doing this number, which this just has a whole lot more power to it. Look at that. <laughs> I wasn't even trying. <laughs> uh, this back drag on there is really nice. I like that. I will want to change the grind on this to something a little bit shallower than what it is. This hook is like the best. I'll just why am I showing it over there? I'll show it to you over here. I mean the the options. If everything here is all stuck together, I'm going to use my finger to stick it all together. You can get in there a little bit and get it up there, and you've got a lock-in spot. You can get it further down if you want. As somebody was saying, you can. If you have actually had room, you can pull two frames up at once. Hmm. And, you know, sometimes frames are crossed. If you've got cross comb down here really bad and you need to take these two frames out as a unit to fix the whole thing, you can actually get that down in there and you can break them both free at once. If you have to break them free one at a time, not so good. Well, yes, of course, you can break them free by doing this too. And you know what? That long tool and this wide piece, well, that works better for that as well. 
has a lot going for it except for its size. Now, and that brings us to Blythewood Bee Company. This tool, which they call the large Turkish hive tool, is available from Blythewood Bee Company. Whether you go on Amazon and type in Turkish hive tool or whether you go to the Blythewood website, either way, I will warn you that the photographs are very confusing because it used to be that the large Turkish hive tool had all this on it. And the small Turkish hive tool had exactly this same hook feature here, cut that much out so that you would just have the length of a regular hive tool. But at this end, all it did was flare slightly right here. And it was flared slightly right there. And that's what the small Turkish hive tool looked like. Now, the small Turkish hive tool looks just like the large Turkish hive tool, only shorter in the handle. The photographs are very confusing. I called the company this morning and I said very clearly, does the, the pictures on the website are very confusing because you seem to be showing the same tool for the small and the large. Does the small Turkish hive tool have the bottle opener on it now? That was the easiest way to ask the question. And the guy says, let me check. Yes, the small tool has the bottle opener, just like the large tool. They're not selling the other one anymore. As I was unwilling to buy the small one, if that's all it was, because, well, it really isn't any different than this. But this if I'm, I'm gonna probably get the smaller one with the wider thing and it very well, well may become my new favorite hive tool. Could happen. Although I've loved this one for many a year at this point. But on the other hand, now we're gonna to get to Frankenstein. Where's Frankenstein's, there we go. This was never sold as a hive tool. This was always sold as a frame cleaner. I think it started getting used as a hive tool mostly because it had a wooden handle on it as much as anything. Uh, because, you know, a lot of beekeepers like a handle. I know I certainly do. But I have the ability to put my own handles on. The people who prefer this tool, you watch them on videos and such, they'll admit They've never used the hammer feature. They'll talk about how this is your queen excluder cleaner. This, I actually ran into a guy doing a video who says, I don't know what that's for. I don't know whether he really didn't know what that was for or whether he just wanted to fish for a whole lot of traffic to his site to get a whole lot of people to comment to explain to him what it was for. I suspect the latter. Because really, it just doesn't take all that much to figure out what that's for. You know, that is for cleaning out your runs. Now, I can't do it to the top because I glue popsicle sticks in mine. But what I did to the bottom, I could do to the top if I was using foundation. Nor do I feel like popping out a piece of foundation just to show you that. I have my sneaking suspicions that he was just fishing for comments because that improves your algorithms. It's hard for me to believe that he really didn't know what that was going to be for. Mm. Now, that being said, I, again, we have a nice deep piece here. But it's possible to bite yourself with this mm -hmm. back here. If you're using, see the way I'm... Mm -hmm. Right. You know, depending upon where I am, I can bite myself with this. Um, and I don't much like that. For one thing, as I say, most people say, oh, and you have the hammer in case you need it. And But they have, most of them say, and I've never used it. Um, if you're going to use this as a hive tool, take it off. Put it in a drawer somewhere. Don't put it in the bottom of your bucket because it's not stainless steel. It's high carbon steel. It's going to become a mass of rust. And if you need a small hammer, put this in your bucket instead. Just put a little tiny hammer in your bucket. 
you know, it'll work better all the way around. This doesn't work too well no matter what you do. So you don't need that if you're going to use this as a hive tool. Take that off. Hey, all of a sudden this thing is lighter. It feels like as light as a feather once you've been dragging that around and it works pretty good. I started coming up after doing all this with sketching up what I thought would be the ideal hive tool. And you know what? I looked at this and went, hey, if I cut this off right here and I grind these off right here, it's no longer a frame cleaner. It's now a hive tool and it's got a great break free uh, lever this way. It's got a break free lever this way. It's got good depth to it. It doesn't have these pieces sticking up over here to chew at me. You know, just a little flare right there. And this is straight up. And in my case, I'd whack the handle off and put the handle on one side because I like a magnet. Now, we're going to get to the part of the video where I'm going to give, at the end of the video now, basically, we've gone through some pros and cons here. The most important thing I've shown you is bevel versus blade thickness. And the shallower your bevel, that is the further back your plunge line is, the better. Okay? Just grind these back. You can do it on a regular grinder. You can do it on a belt grinder. You can do it with a file. Uh, change your bevels so that it slips into the box better. I don't know that you're ever going to slip into the box quite as well as a paint scraper does. But, and again, light, 105 grams. But now we're going to get to the fun part. I promise you that if you didn't sleep through the video, you were going to uh, get a bonus at the end. And it's going to be, why didn't I think of that? I uh, have to uh, give credit to this to Anton. He says he didn't think of it, that he saw it from somebody else. But, hey, I'm stealing it from you, Anton. So... I'm just crediting you. Nothing more than a uh, speaker magnet. Remember what I said earlier? I had made this. Well, the problem with this is that this fits on a belt. Pay no attention to the rope. That's just for hanging it. This fits on a belt, but it doesn't fit on your belt because that's underneath your jacket. So you have to have a B belt a bee jacket belt on. Can you see me from there, dear? Mm -hmm. And so fine, you do this. Well, either you have that jacket bloused way up like this, or you can't reach up. You know, it's going to be stopping you. Okay, that's why gun belts were under the jacket in the old days, right? Uh, you put this in your pocket. You just... Do, 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 do. Same down here. Drop it down there. Boop. It just, you can let go of your hive tool for a minute. It's going to stay where it is. You don't need any of those fancy, you certainly don't need those 40 or $50 plastic giant monstrosities and such. Or put an air tag on it. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been useful last week. I lost this tool for three full days. <laughs> Every day I was out there for about half an hour going, where did that thing get off to? Finally found it. But look, works just fine. And like I can say, I'm probably going to use it up here like this more often than not. Because it's out of the way. It's quick at hand. I don't have to go down or anything. Great idea. Dead simple. Why didn't we think of that before? Thank you, Anton, for that. <laughs> okay, that wraps it up. Um, bevels. It's all about the bevels versus the thickness of the metal so that you can slide in between the boxes effectively. Beyond that, it's a matter of what kind of hook you want. The traditional J hook is an obscenity as far as I'm concerned. You can modify it like this. And you know what? It's almost as good as this really is it's uh, quite comfortable i've just gotten quite used to like as with any hive tool you get used to what you started with and a lot of times it takes a lot to get you to change but anybody can make this change from this one that's easy look for tools 
the unfortunate thing on line is you're looking at a picture and you're looking at the picture straight down. You never told the thickness of the metal. You know, if you were to communicate with somebody and say, what's the bevel like? Where's the plunge line? They wouldn't either know what you're talking about or anything else. Sometimes you just got to roll the dice. If you can look at a bunch of hive tools on a display at one of these big, uh, you know, expos or something, pay attention to such things as the bevel. Don't, ooh, that's really sharp. I don't care how sharp it is. I care about the bevel. That's a wonderful bevel right there. You know, I imagine that's the main reason Steve loves this tool. But we're done. Hopefully I've given you some food for thought, left you with some ideas. So this has been Rich. This is South Florida Beekeeping with Rich. Everybody have a great day. Bye now.